Well, good morning, beloved ones. Turn to somebody and tell them, I am the beloved. I am the beloved. And turn to them and tell them, you are the beloved. You are the beloved. You are loved and lovable. Yes. Well, come on in, beloved ones. There's always plenty of room in the kingdom of God. How good, how wonderful it is today to be here with you. So I have a question I want to ask. It may seem like an odd question, but it's a question that's on my mind. So, how many of you would love to be free of debt? Okay. All right, so there were some of you who did not raise your hand. So the question might be then, so how many of you are actually free of all debt? Oh, I've got one person here. All right. And by that I mean you owe nothing. You owe, you know, no bills, no nothing. You're in debt. You're completely free of debt. Well, that's kind of hard sometimes, you know, especially because, you know, we, we have a mortgage or we have life, but that's okay. It's, it's, it's a goal. We've been working with this series now for seven weeks on building a prosperity consciousness. Now, very early on in this series, I stated that above everything else, that there was something that was key, something that we had to have. Does anybody remember what that was? I didn't, okay. You know, sometimes, it, said, it was seven weeks ago, so I'm gonna give you a pass. But here's the thing, I always ask, sometimes when I ask these questions because I wanna know, I want you to get it, even if it's seven weeks ago, because when you get it, guess what? You get it. When you get it, you get it. So what I said several weeks ago, that above everything else, we need to acquire and get the consciousness of prosperity. Remember I said consciousness was key, right? Because that's the key to life. Right? It's the key to everything that we have. Whatever you have, you have by right of your consciousness. So we talked about that and, and how, how having the conscious awareness that the substance of God, the stuff of God, the good that we are seeking, the blessings that we want, how they are all around us right here, right now, present in the ethers. That, that, there's, that, that everything that you could even think of is already created, already present, simply waiting our attention and awaiting our efforts to bring it forth, right? And I gave you throughout this series some tools that we're supposed to use in bringing forth the invisible into visibility bringing the stuff of God into our lives, right? Bringing the good right here into a manifested real experience. And so if you're just doing in the series, you'll have to get the other the seven, seven tapes because we're nearing the end of the series. We have one more to go. But if you remember that I said also that whatever we hold in our consciousness, and your consciousness basically all your thoughts, your feelings, your attitudes, your beliefs, your values, your perceptions, how you see life, all of that equates how you're going to experience life, right? Now last week, if you recall, I hope I established the equally vital aspect of erasing the notion of debt from our consciousness. Because as Mr. Fillmore so aptly put in his book, and we've been working with two books during this series, Mr. Fillmore's Prosperity Book and Spiritual Economics by Eric Butterworth. And what Mr. Fillmore said concerning debt was this. He said, or the notion of debt, and it's in chapter eight in the book of Prosperity, which is I think one of the most powerful chapters that, uh, that I have come across. There are two chapters that in all of my readings, and I've read a lot of books, I have a library, my books have their own room, there's so many of them. 
But the two books that I remember having the most impact on my life was chapter eight of Fillmore's Prosperity Book and, uh, and Imelda Shankland's chapter on um, non-resistance. But anyway, the, I, I, I diverged from the topic. So what Mr. Fillmore said about this, about debt, he said, or this notion of debt, he said that debt was really a thought of lack, right? With absence at both ends. That debt is a thought of lack with absence at both ends. He said, meaning the creditor believes that he lacks what is owed him and the debtor believes he lacks what is necessary to pay him. So, so there's, there's lack is the absence, right? At both ends, everybody's in lack. Everybody thinks that they don't have what they're supposed to have, or they don't have what they need. I don't have what I'm supposed to get if I'm a creditor, and I don't have what I'm supposed to be able to give if I'm a debtor. So both are in a negative state of, of mind, in a negative uh, a predicament there. And so what we're looking at is then, if this is being true, and if we're going to work on building a prosperity consciousness, then we have to be about the business of eliminating our consciousness of debt. Now, I want you to say and notice that I didn't say that we need to be about the business of eliminating our debt. That's good. That's a good thing to do, and that'll help. But I said we have to be about the business of eliminating our consciousness of debt or our consciousness of lack because both of those entities are never found in God, right? You can't find any lack in God. And we want to, well, some people go about figuring if I could somehow eliminate the consciousness, uh, eliminate my debts, then I'm going to be free from debts. But as a true student and a metaphysician, you know that if you don't eliminate the source and the cause, you're going to just keep reproducing it. So if you just get rid of your debt and you haven't eliminated what caused you to be in debt in the first place, then it's just going to return. So everything, if you have to get anything, the getting that we're going to be getting is what? Consciousness. So what we want to do is learn how to eliminate this notion, this thought, this feeling, this consciousness of lack, this consciousness of debt. Because once you can get rid of that, then you're on to something. Thinking about and speaking or holding on to what you owe others or what others owe you just keeps your consciousness on lack and limitation. Right? Charles Fillmore says this in Prosperity, and it's very powerful. It's on page 122 and 123. He says, one must free one's mind from the burden of debt before the debt can be paid. It's just what I just said. You got to get rid of the burden of debt in here. Where, this is where we live, right? In consciousness. So if you're going to do that, get rid of this burden, this thought of debt before the debt out here can be paid. Then he says, many people have found that the statement, I owe no man anything but love, which actually is a scripture which comes from Romans 13, 8. I owe no man anything but love. And he says, this has helped them greatly to counteract this thought of debt as they use the words their minds were open to an inflow of divine love, and they faithfully cooperated with the divine law of forgiveness in thought, word, and deed. And if you remember last week, forgiveness is also a very key part, right, in freeing yourself up. He said they built up such a strong consciousness of the healing and enriching power of God's love that they could live and work peacefully and profitably with their associates, thus renewed constantly in health and faith and in integrity, they were able to meet every obligation that came to them. The statement, I owe no man anything but love, does not mean that we can disclaim owning our creditor's money 
shucks. <laughs> or to try to evade the payment of obligations we have incurred, shucks. The thing denied is the burdensome thought of debt or of lack. The work of paying debts is an inner work having nothing to do with the debts already owed or with the wrong thoughts that produce them. When one holds to the right ideas, burdensome thoughts will not be contracted. Debts are produced by thoughts of lack, impatient desire, and covetedness. When these thoughts are overcome, debts are overcome, forgiven and paid in full, and we are free from them for all time. So this statement is such a powerful statement. I owe no man anything but love. That's a powerful statement and a powerful thought, and it's one that I took to heart many, many years ago when I first read this book, probably over 30 years ago, or even more, because I've been on this, this path for over 40 years consciously. But this, this chapter and that statement, I took it to heart because it was so powerful. And what it did was it not only transformed my prosperity consciousness, but it also transformed my view on life and on people in particular. Nobody owes me anything. And that thought that nobody owes me anything moves me from my sense of entitlement into a higher perspective. Because don't we sometimes have a sense of entitlement? I know we've all said from time to time, well, Lula, after all the stuff that I did, they owe me. Haven't you ever said that? He or she owes me. Yeah, we think, oh, I did this, so you owe me now. I'm entitled to it. And this is so, this is so powerful because what happens is we start to expect our good to come from other people, right? We forget that our source is God. No matter what others do for you, they don't owe you anything. But somehow we start to look for and we expect our good, our blessings to come from out here, from somebody in here when actually it comes from God. The scripture says your expectation or your hope is in God, not in people and things. So when we go around thinking, well, they owe me, it's a sense of entitlement. The only way that you can expect entitlement is from God. People are fallible. Well-intentioned as we are, we're fallible, right? I might want to give you my very best, but sometimes you might get my less. So, so the expectation is from God. So this thought that, you know, uh, I always say, well, no one owes me anything is a thought that frees me in consciousness. It frees me from thinking and putting my expectations upon you about what I think you should be doing for me. It's a very powerful thought. And the other thought is that not only that nobody owes me anything, but the other powerful thought is I don't owe anyone anything. That also is a very freeing and powerful thought because that frees me from my sense of obligation. See, sometimes, right, we think, well, you know, I'm obligated. After all they did for me, I feel obligated that I need to go and do this now. And observation, our, our obligation feels like it's a burden sometimes. How many of you feel that you're obligated to do things? And it's heavy to carry, right? You know, so, so what happens when we can free ourselves or take this thought, I owe no man anything but love. It frees you. Nobody owes me anything and I don't owe anybody anything. It frees us all to allow ourselves then to develop this thought and to have this thought that all that I do, I do out of conscious choice. All that I do, I do out of love. I choose. I choose love. I choose to do this. I was thinking that, you know, right after service here and I have a full day, I'm going to drive to New York City uh, to take my mother to the doctor tomorrow. Because I kept asking, well, what's going on? What's going on? She's, oh. Well, what did the doctor say? Oh. <laughs> you know, and 
I just said, you know what? And then she said, well, maybe I'll just cancel my appointment. Now, meanwhile, she'd been waiting over two months to get this appointment. I said, you are not canceling anything. I will be there tomorrow morning to take you to the doctor. And the moment I said that, I could feel her relief. She just, you know? And I said, ah. Now, I'm not doing that out of obligation. That's my mother. I could well feel that I'm obligated to do that. But I'm doing it out of love. I'm choosing to do that. See, I'm choosing it out of a consciousness of love, not because I ought to do it, because after all, she gave me everything in life, so therefore I, mm -mm. It doesn't work that way. I am choosing to do that. I owe no man anything but love. And it's so powerful, the thought, because what it does is, is it puts us directly in touch with the most powerful force in the universe, which is what? Love. It's a powerful force. Divine love we're talking about. Divine love heals. It restores. It transforms. It unifies. It harmonizes, right? It restores. Actually, it actually is an attracting force. It, 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 it attracts good to itself. It's such a powerful force. It's a multiplier. Love will multiply. It's a magnet for good. It's a powerful thing. Love draws to itself its own. It has a drawing, attracting, multiplying, increasing factor to it. It's so powerful. Well, you know, you should turn to somebody and say, I'm a magnet for good. Why? Because I'm a divine lover. So tell somebody, I'm a divine lover. Yeah, I'm a magnet for good because I'm a divine lover. Yeah. I didn't say I'm a player. I said I'm a divine lover. Don't get it confused. We're all here to be divine lovers because we are the beloved of God. We're here to put forth that energy, to, to let our love shine through. It's a powerful energy that we have been blessed with and given. See, there is no lack when love is involved. There's no lack when we are able to love. In fact, the scripture says that love is the fulfillment of the law. Love fulfills everything. Love fulfills every spiritual law that there is. It brings everything together for good. It brings everything together for God because God is synonymous with love. That's what the scripture says. God is love. And they that love are born of God. Right? You, and it says you can't say that you love God and hate your brother. It's impossible. You don't love God. You can't do that. Love is a powerful force. So what I said this morning, I said, you know what? Love, if, 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 if I owe no man anything but love, then love is a debt with fullness at both ends. See? So it's, a, it's a debt with fullness at both ends because the person who gives and shares love is blessed, and the person who receives the love is also blessed, right? So it's, it's the fullness at both ends. So here's the thing, in building a prosperity consciousness, we're going to have to learn how to cultivate the consciousness of giving love. Remember I said we were going to talk about the law of giving and receiving and what's love got to do with it. There's a wonderful prosperity affirmation that Stratton Smith uses in his uh, 4T prosperity course. He says, I give in love because I love to give. I give in love because I love to give. When you get into the consciousness that you love to give, hmm, you will be one of the richest people on the earth. You will know something so powerful, so great, because there's something uh, uh, powerful in this very act of giving love and giving in general. Because giving is a premier quality that is necessary for the building of a prosperity consciousness. You can't have a prosperity consciousness without understanding this quality of giving. Because it's a law. Giving is a law for growth 
an expansion. You want things to grow, you want to expand, you have to understand the factor of giving. It is a, it's a, it's a, a powerful expression that says, whatever you give, you will receive. Whatever you put out, returns, right? As you sow, shall you reap. All that we understand. What you give to life is what you will receive from life. So often we want to receive something for nothing. But that's not how the universal spiritual law works. It's called the law of giving and receiving, right? Giving and receiving. It's one facet. It says to giving and, but it's all the same thing. And your receiving, friends, is initiated by what? Your giving. Your receiving is initiated. Your giving, you see, your receiving is on the back end of that equation. It's the result of, from the action of giving. On the front end is the giving, on the back end is the receiving. So the only thing, there, is, there, is, there are two things that we get something for nothing for. And the only thing that we're going to get or receive without having to give something is the grace and love of God. See, you don't have to work for that. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to do anything because the grace and love of God are always pouring forth for us. And so thank God we have that. We don't have to say, oh, I, if I'm a perfect person, then God will love me. Oh, if I do things this way, then I'll have grace. Uh-uh. Grace and love are pouring forth constantly. So thank God for that. But as we work on our prosperity consciousness, we have to understand, you know, this wonder, these wonderful spiritual laws. Jesus was very clear when he articulated the divine law, when he said in Luke 6, 38, give and it will be given unto you. And then he said in, in Matthew 7, verse 2, he said, and the measure you give will be the what? Measure you receive. So whether we're talking about quality or quantity, this is the point that we must get. It is that your consciousness of giving plays a significant part in your expression and in your experience of life. Your consciousness of giving and the manner in which you give is just as vital. It is extremely vital because it's the quality of your heart. It's the quality of your consciousness. He said, freely you give and freely you shall receive. He didn't, you know, freely you give and freely you will receive. So it's your consciousness that is important. And so here's a tip. Don't give out of a sense of obligation. If you feel obligated, don't give it because you're ruining your consciousness. Don't give in anger. I got to pay these bills and I got to give all this stuff. You know, don't give in anger. The measure you give out is the measure you're going to receive, right? Don't give in fear. Oh, Lord, I don't know if I'm going to have enough. If you don't know that you're going to have enough and that God is enough, and what did we say last week? There is enough, I am enough, and I have enough. But if you don't understand that concept, then don't give in fear. It's best you keep what you have. Just remember, close the fist and keep it. Right? Nothing in, nothing out. That's okay if that's the way you want to live. But don't give in fear. Don't give, you know, with a sense of judgment. Hmm. Now, I don't think they, why are they getting that? They don't deserve that. What did they do? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Don't give in judging the situation. Don't give out of shame right? or blame. Don't give to be important. You know, I wrote a big thousand dollar check. <laughs> I think unity should have a plaque with my name on it in the front of the kind of thing. Mm -mm. Don't, don't give to feel important or to be liked or to be valued. You already are valued by God. Right? So we don't have to do these things in a limited consciousness. We give out of the consciousness of love, pure and simple. So if you're going to have this consciousness, you need to have a right understanding, a right consciousness. We remember that we're not, it's not about giving to receive. You know, it didn't say give to receive. 
it's giving and receiving. Receiving is just a natural outcome. It's on the back end. It's just simply a result. The main point is the front end. It's the giving. It's the quality that comes and the spirit behind your actions, the consciousness behind what you do. I give in love because I love to give. When you are willing to give, to do, to be, to share, to express love in back of all of your actions, the universe repays you. The universe will repay you in kind through the law of giving and receiving, sowing and reaping, the law of compensation, the law of cir divine circulation, right? Your consciousness will draw to you that which is good, and whatever you have, you will have by right of your consciousness. And it doesn't matter if it's two pennies or if it's two million dollars, as long as you give it in love. Because love will expand, love grows, love blesses, love multiplies itself and whatever is given in its name, in its nature, in love. Pay your bills with love. Give your gifts with love. Share your talents and your abilities with love. Whatever you do, offer it in love from this consciousness of love. Jack Addington said, the person who gives of himself and his substance, no matter how little, opens the door for life to pour in, not only compensating him for his gift, but increasing the gift. The more one gives, the more that person is able to receive. And we do have to remember that we must allow ourselves to also receive. We don't give to receive or to get, but when you give, receiving will be a part of that process. It's a part of the spiritual law. So we must also be willing to receive our good. Never push away your blessings. This is what lesson I've had to learn. I have to say, oh no, thank, oh no. I'm learning to say, oh, thank you. <laughs> See, don't push away your, so if you're on the receiving end, a hearty and gracious thank you will keep your heart open. It'll keep your mind open to the good that is there. You'll be in the flow of life. You'll be in the flow of, of this abundance. You'll be in the wake of spiritual energy in life that is the spiritual law of giving and receiving. So we always have something to give. Give yourself away. When I heard that Keith was singing, I, I said, oh, if I had his telephone number, I would call him up and tell him to sing, I give myself away. I love that song. I didn't have your telephone number, so you were spared. <laughs> but I love that Give yourself away. Give of your life and your love. Corey Temboon said this, the measure of life after all is not in its duration, but in its donation. It's not how long, but it's what are you giving to life? What are you giving to your own life? What are you giving to the lives of others? The more we give, the more we receive. So if you truly want to be prosperous, then you have to understand the relationship between the law of love, the law of giving and receiving, the laws of prosperity, because they all carry this magnifying, multiplying, increasing energy, just like gratitude, thanksgiving, and praise. We talked about those earlier. Well, love and giving and receiving are in that category because those things are all the true secret to building and experiencing a consciousness of prosperity and then a, a life of abundance. So find something to love. I didn't say someone. I said something to love. And maybe if you give up that thing, I'm looking for love and forget, find something to love. Something to give every day. Give something of yourself every single day, even if it's just a smile. But you want to cultivate the spirit and the consciousness of generosity. And when you do that, you will find yourself being blessed in magnificent ways. And not only blessed monetarily or materially, but you'll be blessed spiritually. Because all that other stuff fades away eventually. 
but your essence, your soul, your character lasts forever, your spirit. So remember to be blessed and a blessing, to love without conditions, to give without restrictions, because this truly is how you will learn to live fully and freely. And if you ever find yourself saying, well, what's, what's love got to do with my prosperity? The answer is everything. Namaste and blessings. <laughs> Namaste. Namaste. Namaste.